button. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Greetings, and welcome to this joint DCMI ACES webinar. I'm Stuart Sutton, Managing Director of DCMI. Now, it's my pleasure today uh, to introduce the joint webinar series, today's presenters, and the topic. The joint DCMI ACES webinars are presented as a service to members of DCMI and ACES and to guests. The purpose of the joint series is to advance the discourse and practice of innovative metadata design, deployment, and practice. Our presenters today are Pedro Principe and Jochen Schurwagen. Pedro is, the is an information specialist with uh, documentation services at the University of Minho in Portugal. And Jochen is a research fellow at, at um, Bielefeld University Library in Germany. Today's topic um, is open air. Open Air is a participatory European open access infrastructure to manage scientific publications and associated scientific material via repository networks. It supports discovery, sharing, and reuse of open access publications and EC funded research results. It enhances publication by interconnecting them with data sets funding information, related uh, publications, institutional affiliations, and metrics. You'll have an opportunity uh, to ask the presenters questions near the close of the webinar. We ask that you wait to enter your questions in text until near the end of the webinar. I will moderate the questions and answers and will address as many questions as our time allows. So with that, I'll turn the podium over to Pedro and Jochen. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, many thanks for this uh, for this um, invitation for for this opportunity to present uh, Open Air and specifically the the, the Open Air guidelines. Um, we we. We want to focus our our presentation uh, in in the guidelines, but of course we will also um, uh, do a little bit of, of context about the infrastructure uh, already presented uh, briefly by 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 Stuart. Many thanks for that, uh, and then um, we. we we will present the guidelines, the, um, some alignment uh, uh, that OpenAir is doing with the other um, repositories, networks, or other repository initiatives. Some future directions, the next steps uh, on the on the on the OpenAir guidelines, and to 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 close this presentation, some um, specific tools. Uh, we developed in open air or um, uh, uh, together with the uh, repositories or journals community to to improve the the, the compatibility uh, with the, the open air guidelines for that systems um, so um, I'm based in in Portugal uh, and I'm taking part of this uh, to this the university I'm based in Portugal in the University of Minho and we are taking part of this project, this infrastructure, and uh, Minu is also uh, one of the, the, the partners of the, the guidelines team that is responsible to develop the, the, the guidelines um, together with um, other partners, and Jochen is um, based on Germany and is the coordinator of this uh, guidelines team. Um, so uh, very briefly to to, I think it's important to give some context, and then we, we can understand better, and we can um, present better the, the the specifications of the of, of the guidelines. Um, so, um, the open air is the, the 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 open access infrastructure for research in Europe. Uh, you can find all the, the information and all the the content we harvest in in openair.eu. Uh, our portal, um, and we have already um, more than uh, 600 uh, data providers, um, 
repositories, literature or publications repositories, also uh, some data repositories and um, journals, um, journal aggregators, uh, so we, we can find already content from more than 600 uh, data providers uh, with different levels of um, compatibility with uh, the open air, um, and this is also related to the compatibility with our um, guidelines. So, um, it's, it's, to put this clear, it's important to say that um, the infrastructure that we have now is a result of uh, um, two previous projects. We start in 2009 with Open Air, the first project, um, f focus on, on the um, European Commission Open Access pilot. So, um, uh, from the beginning, this is a, 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 a infrastructure guided by the, the open access uh, funder policies um, specifically to, to implement um, to support the European Commission uh, open access requirements um, then uh, we um, uh, proceed with a, a, a second uh, phase of the project open air plus uh, 2000 the end of 2011 until um, last year um, <clears throat> and now to manage the infrastructure uh, or the open air infrastructure we are running the open air 2020 project uh, and based on these um, uh, three projects we uh, build the, this infrastructure that have a participatory approach um, uh, the participatory approach we can understand that via our e e infrastructure so it's um, we harvest content from different data providers, we um, have guidelines to improve the interoperability and to uh, uh, make it possible the, the aggregation of different content from different uh, uh, data providers from different publications repositories, data repositories, but we have also a um, very important um, participatory approach, a human participatory approach. So. Um, the, the 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 main idea of this infrastructure is also to have a, um, a representation in each um, uh, European Union member state. So we have a, a, a national open access desk in every country. So um, to support to support the infrastructure, to support of course dissemination activities, uh, and to support the open access. Um, uh, EC uh, requirements disseminating uh, via uh, for different um, stakeholders for researchers for um, uh, research institutions research managers project coordinators different um, stakeholders of, of the, the open air infrastructure and of course uh, the result is uh, um, uh, an integrated scientific information system so um, the, the 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 basic idea is not to build a system uh, a centralized system but a participatory system that integrates different uh, data providers uh, different systems from from the funders um, we start of course with the systems from the European Commission where we can um, uh, collect and uh, integrate and in interlink uh, publications uh, from different data providers, uh, identify the, 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 the outcomes uh, of the, the project, uh, the data sets and the publications, identify the organizations that participate in different uh, projects and of course uh, uh, authors. So these are the three pillars of this uh, of the project and of of course of the infrastructure. Uh, in the infrastructure, uh, we um, have um, the data pro providers that uh, contribute with the content for uh, our system for our, the open air platform, and then we delivered services. So. Um, we um, have different types of data providers, uh, and uh, as a result of, 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 of that, uh, of course, we have also um, uh, um, guidelines uh, targeting uh, um, these different uh, types of data providers. Jochen will 
represent um, um, that. Uh, so we um, uh, collect uh, uh, the content from publications, literature repositories, open access journals, and uh, recently also from data repositories, uh, and um, <coughs> also uh, we have uh, we can do it for uh, CRIS systems and we collect the funding information from the funders and that we can then um, uh, link to the to the um, to the publications uh, we have uh, process uh, of um, processes that we can validate the um, providers of the content that we can uh, uh, clean and deduplicate the 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 content, the records that we receive, we can uh, infer um, information and link uh, this information to have this um, uh, this system, this integrated system, with all the, the information we we, we gather. Uh, and um, additionally, we have also a. Uh, uh, a repository, uh, uh, Zenodo, uh, that's uh, that is like an orphan repository. To to this is a service available for all the, uh, the researchers and institutions that don't have a repository and can, of course, um, comply with the, the open access funder mandates uh, using uh, Zenodo to deposit uh, their publications. Um, and then we have different. Um, we can offer different uh, services via our portal, via uh, APIs. We have um, very relevant services for um, the funders for monitoring, the for research managers and for, for the project coordinators for projects for uh, the about the um, reporting. So we can, as we can, uh, we gather all the content and we identify. Um, the outcomes of the project, we can deliver the project uh, publications list that uh, is a very useful service for the, the project coordinators for the project that they can uh, just uh, with one click export a list of publications from their projects and we have um, services that can, uh, uh, these services are um, targeting different uh, stakeholders so uh, different uh, kinds of stakeholders, repository managers, uh, researchers, research managers, research institutions that, that can um, um, use and receive information from our uh, services. Uh, specifically about the, the data providers and the, the, the content that we can um, uh, uh, harvest from the, uh, the data providers that could, uh, comply with the, our guidelines. Uh, I have these uh, two images to, to, to put this clear from our content acquisition policy. So uh, from the, um, the repositories, from publications repositories or literature repositories, uh, what open air um, harvest is uh, the, um, the open access content from for example, from an institutional repository, uh, and all the content um, uh, related to um, uh, European Commission um, funded projects, or um, also other national or other types of uh, uh, funders uh, content. So we don't gather all the repository content, we um, gather only open access and funded uh, content. Um, for the, for example, for data repositories, uh, we do the same, of course, for the funded content. So we are with European Commission um, uh, funded uh, outputs from projects, uh, data sets, also other national funders. We can do it for other national funders. Uh, and um, we uh, at this moment we don't uh, uh, harvest all the open data uh, content we um, harvest uh, data sets that are linked with uh, a publication that we have in the, the source uh, 
managers. So let me do your can presenter. Okay. Hello. Um, I want to introduce you with the uh, open air guidelines that are uh, specific for uh, data sources. And first of all, I uh, want to uh, provide you with some, some context information. So the starting point of the uh, guidelines we have now uh, is actually um, seven or eight years ago with another uh, EU project uh, driver that was running from 2006 to 2008. And at that time, um, it was um, OITC, a uh, simple doubling core, um, as the most established um, metadata format and, and introduced as a lowest common denominator in the OAI community. Um, but it has a number of interoperability issues um, because um, it allows of numerous interpretations um, how to put um, values uh, in the elements. And so it was required to agree on some kind of syntax, meaning how to use the protocol and how to use um, the metadata values, and uh, agreements about um, controlled value, uh, controlled terms. Um, as a result, the driver guidelines version two were introduced in 2008, and in this context, um, and for implementation, OIDC an application profile um, with for, for encoding schemes uh, called info EU repo um, was, uh, was introduced. Um, at that time, um, 2008, it was still before the hype of a semantic web and therefore um, at that time um, one of the um, infrastructures available were for instance the info uh, URI registry which is uh, actually now deprecated. And um, so seven or eight years ago, uh, mainly textual resources uh, were of interest uh, where we uh, collected metadata from. And it is noteworthy that the driver guidelines were then continued uh, in the open air uh, project since 2009. Um, but in the meantime, a lot has happened. Uh, for instance, in the different phases uh, of the Open Air Projects, the scope was expanded, but also the um, requirements. So, um, new types of data sources emerged, like um, for research data and for research information. Um, other kind of content, non than textual content, um, became more um, popular, um, like um, research data. Um, and then um, with that kind of content it was um, interesting more and more um, to link um, the publication and, and, and uh, research data and um, to complete this aspect um, it is also important to have enough um, context about um, the research question so it is important to know with what was um, the project, the uh, publication um, reports, the results. Last but not least, uh, new identifier-based infrastructures were introduced um, in, in the last years. And um, so, for instance, for research uh, outputs, um, DOI-based um, infrastructures like um, uh, Crossref, like DataSide, but also um, for um, authors and contributors, uh, respective um, infrastructures like ORCID or Researcher ID and so on. And now we also have um, a FundRef and other kinds of uh, identifier systems like ESNI uh, to uniquely identify uh, funders and projects. So there's still a lot of development in this kind of area and um, this is uh, where we, uh, in the next uh, months and years we need to um, further improve and develop um, our guidelines in collaboration with um, other initiatives. 
So this is a short overview um, of the different phases of the guidelines where we started in driver, uh, mainly for textual repositories. Um, then we introduced some properties uh, for open air to, uh, regarding uh, funder project um, encoding, regarding access rights, uh, still for textual based repositories. And then in the most recent um, version, uh, we introduced um, a set of guidelines, uh, namely for uh, textual repositories for data repositories and for research information systems. So the result is that uh, in case of the literature repositories, we, and of course journal platforms, we still rely on uh, Dublin Core, whereas for data repositories, um, we rely on the data site metadata schema. And in case of research information systems, the Serif standard that at least in Europe, um, is established. So now I'd like to give the floor to um, Pietro again. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, we have three types of guidelines. I will start with the guidelines for literature um, uh, data source, for literature publications repositories that uh, we start to, to build on top of the, of the driver guidelines. So open air guidelines continues the, the driver version two guidelines. Um, the metadata format is OAIDC, as you can um, present where we start. Um, uh, we um, have a specific application profile, info El repo, uh, to um, implement some uh, specific elements. So uh, we extend um, uh, the guidelines by, by some uh, specific elements that we want to, to, to have. Uh, in the infrastructure, the the project, the funder project information, um, the the embargo period, as we are talking about uh, open access funder requirements uh, that usually have um, specifications for the embargo period. We uh, for that we need also to collect this information. Um, the 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 status, the open access status, so the the, the access rights. Of uh, the publication, uh, and then three um, uh, additional properties about uh, alternative identifier, reference data sets, and reference publications to um, make it possible to link uh, publications to, to data um, <coughs> and to link different publications. So um, we start in these guidelines to, to to have a, a, a specific uh, set, uh, so set is, is, is a standard component of. Okay, um, I'm very sorry for this interruption. So let me continue um, where we stopped. It was about um, the open air OI set we introduced in order to group. Um, publication metadata which have uh, specific um, uh, properties. So uh, we introduced a set name called open air to group elements that are, um, that, that describe open access publications uh, or that are publications as an outcome of an EC funded uh, project or an outcome of a project funded by any other uh, funder. Um, now, is, here's some more detailed description about um, the properties we introduced uh, and the, uh, the semantics and syntax um, we um, recommend to use uh, so far. So, um, in particular for project ID, we have chosen um, the DC element DC relation. Uh, it's mandatory if applicable, and we have this. Um, special syntax uh, from the info repo um, 
encoding scheme, in this case to encode the grant agreement number together with an acronym of the funder and um, the funding stream. In this case, the funder is the European Commission. You see the funding stream is a uh, framework program 7, FP7, and uh, six digits of the uh, grant ID. There's also an extended syntax uh, which includes um, in f full length the name of the funder, um, the funding program, uh, the jurisdiction, uh, the project name, or the project acronym. So, next, what we introduced uh, and where we were required to, to identify is about the access rights. Um, that is not, of course, the same as, as a license that uh, might apply it to a publication, uh, but also very important uh, to know if a publication is uh, openly accessible or not, or if um, there are some um, restrictions um, applied in order to access a resource, or if some kind of embargo period uh, is um, applied. The embargo period is, in our case, defined um, by mm, the publication date. Um, and the embargo end date. And in this case, um, in addition to uh, DC rights uh, with the semantics of embargoed access, to describe the access rights, we require to have a DC date uh, following a syntax of info EU repo date, embargo end date. Next, we have properties. Um, where we want to um, identify and extract alternative identifiers that might be assigned or related um, to the resource, to the publication. Um, and that is um, in the property alternative identifier. Um, so, for instance, we have defined a syntax um, in case this publication has a DUI or has a PubMed identifier or archive identifier, uh, a URN and so on. We want also find out um, links from a publication to a research data set um, where we defined a syntax. We also defined a syntax um, for referenced or cited publications. In particular, and since um, the Open Air 2020 project um, is an instrument of the European Commission to implement the open access uh, mandate um, of funded uh, projects in Horizon 2020, um, we have to ensure that with our guidelines we are compatible with the um, requirements uh, from the European Commission. And here's a list where um, we have on the left, the property defined uh, in this open access uh, guidelines um, in Horizon 2020. In the middle, the um, field we use from Dublin Core, and on the right, the value we um, expect. It can be um, either a free text field or from, uh, from a controlled vocabulary or required to follow a specific syntax. So these properties are, of course, um, the, um, the name of the funder and the funding program, the EU funding acknowledgement. Um, we want to know if a publication has a status of a quality, a status of peer reviewed. And we uh, need to know if a publication is under any kind of embargo period. Um, we want to know the project information. Um, it is important to assign a persistent identifier uh, to a publication. Uh, then more and more it is required to know um, the license under which a publication is published. And here um, it, would, um, it would be uh, nice to have not just a human readable description of the license, but also um, a machine readable uh, URL of the license condition. And 
an author, in order to disambiguate um, authors, we need to start with the introduction of, um, of, of author identifiers. Um, we know that um, the syntax we recommend at the moment is not perfect, it's a workaround, and it borrows some uh, syntax used uh, especially in OJS uh, uh, journal uh, metadata. So uh, when encoding is like the last name, the first name, a semicolon, and after that an optional um, ORCID identifier, for instance, can be applied. And then, of course, we want to know um, a link to a related research outcome, usually a research data set or other kind of research The other type of repositories, this is based on the data site metadata schema because it's a proven standard, especially for heterogeneous data sources and um, has similar to Dublin Core, uh, maintained by um, the Dublin Core Metadata Initiative, that this kind of um, schema is maintained by a trusted and sustainable organization, in this case data site, supported by uh, various uh, institutions in the world, and last but not least the support of data citation via this uh, metadata scheme. The metadata format in case of um, uh, transfer via OIP image is OAI data site. We require a specific OAI set to identify those uh, records uh, which is called open air data. And we have uh, Zenodo um, as a reference implementation um, for the open air data repository guidelines. However, the, some adaptations um, for open air were necessary and they were also agreed. Um, we see metadata group of data site. So we are allowed to include additional uh, persistent identifier schemes in addition to DUI, for instance, for URN, IRC, and other kinds of uh, PIDs. Um, we strongly recommend links to um, related publications and data sets. Um, we recommend whenever uh, applicable um, to provide a value in the contributor property about funding information. Um, compared to the standard data site metadata, the uh, data and description are mandatory in OpenAir. And we use um, the encoding scheme for access rights uh, from InfoEU repo uh, for the rights property. The third set of guidelines is for CRIS managers, which is based on Serif XML. Um, we mm, think that Serif is a de facto standard um, for the CRIS data model. Um, it defines a number of entities like for organization, person, projects, and so on. And Serif XML is established as a data exchange standard, uh, at least in the CRIS world. And again, here we have this Eurocris, an organization uh, which is uh, trusted and sustainable also in the long run. However, um, we in OpenAir, we don't need um, the whole set of Serif entities, so only a subset is required, mainly um, an entity for the project, uh, for funding, uh, for the publication result, other kinds of results. Um, organization unit, pers um, participated uh, persons, uh, service and equipment. Again, also in this case, adaptations for open air were necessary, as I said, uh, a subset of the reef entities. And um, this Guidelines support different levels of interoperability um, on the semantic level. Um, the uh, the serif semantics uh, vocabularies 
are used mainly um, for classifying relationships between the entities and in order to keep consistency with the other set of open air guidelines, um, info air repo encoding schemes are used for resource types and access rights. On the syntactic level, um, a distinct namespace for the uh, serif schema was introduced and nesting is only done for multilingual attributes federated identifiers and linked entities. Regarding the system level, um, the desired transfer protocol is still OIP mage, but we see exception compared to the usual um, usage of this kind of protocol that um, for each type of entity um, an OIP set is um, defined and there's also an OIP set for the entire serif graph. Last but not least, this is a slide of open air compatibility levels. Um, the reason is that we have to deal with um, a number of versions of open air guidelines. This is specifically for the literature guidelines, um, starting with um, the first version based on the driver guidelines to identify open access content, uh, with then starting with open air to identify EC funded content. Then uh, currently, we support a combination of open access or EC funded or national um, funded content. So how are the guidelines um, adopted or mapped uh, with other repository networks? We have a good uh, and strong collaboration uh, with a repository network called La Referencia in Latin America. They are um, very recently um, aligned with the open air guidelines. Um, centrally here is that they um, reuse the same uh, metadata elements and, and the syntax and, and semantics as we do in, open, in the open air guidelines. Um, of course, um, they have uh, to consider some specificities, so they only consider uh, open access or embargoed access content, um, and they already recommend the usage of Creative Commons licenses in the metadata. And there are also some um, differences um, if usage of an DC element is mandatory or recommended. However, the collaboration uh, between both initiatives uh, will ensure that um, we, we keep future um, compatibility of the guidelines. Another case is about the RIOX. It's a specific case for repositories in UK uh, to support compliance with their funder policies regarding open access. And we had a lot of discussion between RIOX people and open air guidelines people and it ended up that they introduced um, an extra new element and attributes to encode project and funding information. Um, the RIOX metadata format itself is uh, also based on elements from OIDC plus specific elements uh, as RIOX terms and RIOX attributes and they support uh, the NISO recommendations um, on access and license. However, in the case of the Horizon 2020 uh, open access mandate, it is important that we uh, create and continue um, collaboration between UK repositories and open air and this is currently done via an agreed mapping between RIOX um, and the open air literature guidelines. However, it is important to note that um, we, with a future release of guidelines, we uh, should agree uh, on a shared standard instead of uh, a separation. 
So this leads me to the next um, topic about future directions and the next steps we have to do. Um, so the point here is that we have for scholarly communication more and more innovative services and they require um, more comprehensive and improved uh, metadata quality. So that means that the, the metadata have to support some features in order to disambiguate um, authors, contributors, um, funding organizations and uh, research outputs um, by identifiers. Then um, it was it would um, very much ease um, services like for text mining to have um, explicit links to repository landing pages and full text files in metadata records. Also um, explicit links between publications and other research outputs in the form of data citation would be very useful. Um, improvement regarding more and the detailed bibliographic citation information um, is um, important. And last but not least, um, a machine-readable way to um, read a license information. Another element um, of future directions is that this kind of metadata guidelines need to be future-proof. That means they have to be compatible with linked data principles. And they, uh, such a metadata uh, schema needs to be extensible uh, towards um, a new open science, uh, towards properties used in, in, in open science. And it is important to keep to some extent and if possible backward compatibility to previous use standards uh, and to introduce new standards uh, on a low barrier. So, um, in case of open air, um, we agreed to follow the DCMI um, guidance on publishing metadata um, and using DC terms and um, attributes for DC terms seems to be a good way um, for an upgrade of the metadata schema. And then we have another initiative um, within the um, Confederation of Open Access Repositories with an interest group of controlled vocabularies that will um, provide a solution to supersede the currently used InfoE repo application profile. But it's not only a technical issue, it's also an issue of willingness on an organizational level. So what we need is an alignment and collaboration um, between the major repository initiatives. And so I listed a few of them, like La Referencia, SHARE in the United, United States, uh, RIPES in UK and Open Air in Europe. And we have some mechanisms um, we can use. For instance, um, a core CASRI um, open access interoperability working group where representatives from these um, initiatives networks um, participate and they are working on an alignment on uh, metadata elements and vocabularies. And as I already mentioned, we have the interest group on controlled vocabularies um, where we're not only working on an update of the techni technological standard, so for instance towards using uh, a simple knowledge organization system, but also again on the organizational level um, where we start to establish an editorial board of experts that feel responsible uh, to maintain uh, such vocabulary in, in the long term. So uh, I would like to give uh, yeah, the floor to, to Pedro if possible. Okay. Yes. Yes you, can, yes, you can. I hope I don't lost the connection. <laughs> okay. Just. OK. 
Okay. Okay, so uh, I suppose you um, are seeing my slides and my voice, I hope. <laughs> um, okay. Just. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry for my. I lost my connection. Let, let's finish the. Um, uh, the webinar, so we have this last uh, topic about some tools to to um, to help uh, repositories, uh, repository managers to to comply with the the, the, the open air guidelines and to act as uh, um, uh, tools to, to to act as facilitators of of, of this uh, compatibility. So the first um, two I want to highlight is the, they are from Open Air specifically. So we have a validator um, that uh, the users can use to test the compatibility and to register the the, the data provider, a new data provider. So openair.eu slash validator, you can uh, register it and then test the compatibility of the repository. So the 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 first feature that we have here in this validation, the, the validator is the possibility to run a compatibility test. Um, it's very easy. So uh, just enter the OAI PMH base uh, URL and then you can um, verify if the repository is uh, uh, compatible with the, the guidelines. You can uh, test uh, the repository against the, the the, the guidelines, uh, metadata specifications. Um, we ran this compatibility test uh, for two levels, the level of usage and the level of content, and we test if uh, we have uh, specific sets for open air and uh, for the content, uh, the elements that we um, have as mandatory and recommended, we um, identify all these uh, elements and we test it. And we produce a, a report to the user uh, to have uh, this information. Um, additionally, to the, to, the, to the possibility to have a the test, uh, we have the registration. Uh, so, um, using this validator, uh, you can uh, join uh, OpenAir. You can just register your repository uh, in, in OpenAir. So, you can test it. After test, you receive uh, the reports. If uh, you have a successful uh, compatibility uh, tests, you can registered your repository. We uh, use OpenDoor as the the, uh, the source of information of the directory of repositories uh, for the case of repositories and you can just register using our validator tool. The second um, the second um, the tool I want to highlight here is the, the API, the OpenAir API. We have a different um, different um, uh, resources here. Um, so the OpenAir API allows developers to access the metadata information space of OpenAir programmatically. So we have different um, um, uh, access to, to, to information, bulk access to to the OpenAir OAI PMH, and but the the, uh, the most important and what we want to highlight here is the the, um, the bulk access to, to the project. So um, we delivered here the list of projects uh, from FP7 and Horizon 20 from the European Commission and also from another funder, Welcome Trust, that is already listed in, in open air. And uh, as a, a, a pilot of a national funder, we have also uh, the um, the Portuguese major funder FCT. So we have already we provide already here the um, information uh, for from uh, not only from European Commission and national uh, funder the FCT from 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 Portugal and using this uh, this um, 
list of project service uh, you can easily integrate in different um, uh, repositories, uh, platforms we delivered uh, specifically uh, information for this space and ePrint uh, uh, repository platforms. Um, and I will uh, give you examples of the uses of this um, API. Uh, before that, uh, we are also, uh, we since uh, uh, the first version of the Open Air Guidelines, we try always to collaborate with um, the repository platforms communities. So, at least for uh, this space, it prints any venue, you, we have um, different ways to, to, to make uh, uh, easy the, the, co the compliance with the guidelines. So we have different um, add-ons or different um, um, plugins of patches for for this space. Uh, different cases for different versions. Uh, for reprints, we have also um, uh, some some uh, at least one plugin developed very early uh, in the in the open air. Uh, first project and uh, recently uh, some uh, also uh, code available in GitHub that we can use to easily uh, make the open air compliance possible with the last version of the of the um, uh, literature um, guidelines and we have also for Invenue based on of course the implementation of Zenodo and um, for OGS, for journals, for at least for OGS. So we have this um, at least for dif dif four different um, softwares, repositories, and journals. We have some um, tools to make easy the the, the compliance. Um, Uh, and I give only here the example of uh, this space uh, because it's 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 different from version to version. But uh, we start to have um, add-on uh, to extend way and to put into and to make possible the compatibility with the, the version one and two of the guidelines. And in the last um, three versions of this space, the 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 compatibility is uh, is a st is a standard part of of, of this last three versions, uh, which just uh, we uh, only want to um, to make it more compatible. Uh, so to com comply with the last version of the guidelines, using a, um, a add-on uh, for the last version. So this space five. Um, so uh, uh, these are the tools we have available for uh, compliance, and, and we have some specific um, uh, add-ons also in this space uh, for um, to to um, uh, to make it easy the, the 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 workflow of deposit in the in in. The, in the repositories, the space repositories, and the way the users can easily identify the project. So, we start with uh, the Open Air Authority Control add-on, um, and now, very very recently, under the the Portuguese National uh, Network, we delivered um, uh, an add-on, the Open Air Funders project list, that. Um, uh, uh, Make the possibility to easily uh, identify the project when the user is depositing the uh, specific publication. So I have here uh, just a, a screenshot showing the example in the uh, University of Minya repository that easily in the workflow in the submission workflow you can just you have one field and that is this relation. Um, where you can, um, where we have this add-on installed with a tool that we can search, search for the name or for the acronym or for the project ID and just select the project and and head to the to the to the record, the metadata record. Um, so I suppose we finish, Jochen. Sorry for my for for the problem that I have with the connection. I just. Uh, 
um, understood, I suppose, five minutes after <laughs> because I continued my presentation and then, and then I understood that I had no connection. <laughs> Sorry. So I suppose now it's a moment to have um, receive your questions if you have or to receive your comments. Yes, we have a few minutes left. Um, unfortunately, uh, technology has not been our friend today, and so our, our time is a little short, um, but we do have time for some. Uh, if you enter your questions, there's a question entry text form in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, um, and if you ask your questions there, I will, uh, uh, I will moderate them for you. If we, uh, our time runs out, and it might, um, the questions are, uh, are part of the record and, that, and the um, uh, presenters will have access to the question, any questions that don't get answered. Um, uh, at the moment, we, we don't have any. Ah, here one. Okay. Well, I think it's, uh, thank you. This has been a very helpful, this is a question. Why does OpenAir not use the NISO recommendations of free to read and license fields as RAOXX does? Um, well, mm, OpenAir is um, primarily based on um, institutional and thematic repositories as a network. And it was always our impression that this uh, group um, that has um, mm, written these uh, recommendations are more from, from the publisher perspective. This is um, one aspect. Um, another aspect is that um, the NICE recommendations um, are limited to um, to give an indicator if a publication is um, freely accessible or not, uh, on and on the license condition. Uh, but um, we need, as I explained in in my presentation, um, more um, the introduction of more identifiers for funders projects authors and contributors. Other questions? Okay, I think we're, we're very close. It's, it's 12 minutes after the hour. So I want to thank um, Peter and Joachim for, uh, for uh, your presentation today and for bearing with us as technology failed. Um, I think it still produced a, uh, uh, a very interesting webinar, which I am assuming is now in two parts. Um, uh, so anyway, thank you. And I noticed that um, even with our technical difficulties, we had almost the, everybody was able to log back in. So, um, so everyone got the benefit of the full webinar. So again, thank you very much, um, Peter and Jochen. And uh, Stefan, any announcements? Again, thank you to all those that were able to log back in after the technical difficulty. We will have the slides and the recordings made available to the attendees within 48 hours of today's broadcast. And if you have any questions for the speakers, you may contact them at the addresses on your screen at the moment. All right, and if there is nothing else, again, thank you and we hope you have a pleasant day. Thank you all. Okay. Mm, many thanks for the post and for this opportunity. All right. And sorry for the, the problem. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Thank you so much for being able to continue. Okay, thank you. All right. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye all. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.